I see that, and that's like the empty stare my dog gives me when she wants food. Your dog hates you. Probably. <laughs> Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how to, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin, that's Jordan, that's Pedro, together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form. You know him, you love him. Cocaine Voltron. Gentlemen, what's up? What's new? Another week. Chalky show. Sit back. Put your adults in their upright positions. Now, I did get a reminder. I want to remind all of our beautiful party patrons because November is coming up. And I got that email yesterday. Apple tax is kicking in. It doesn't affect me, but I know there has to be at least one person in our audience that has used the Apple Pay thing to subscribe to Patreon. Which I guess you're used to because you got to pay the Apple tax on Netflix and everything. You're going to get the Apple tax on Patreon. So unfortunate. Well, you life hack. Use, open, the, use the open browser, the browser. Yeah. yeah. And like side up and like switch it over like that. So you don't pay the Apple tax. But then again, you're like, whatever. Ha ha ha. I'm peasants. I'm not worried about 30% con, con, convenience fee yeah. for my gold plated iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> toss another gold watch on the fire. You're like, yeah, no, you, just, you just toss the iPhone on the fire and you get a new one. <laughs> No, but I listen, like for whatever reason, dude, um, and I recommend like Apple, like if, you, if you're stuck with a work laptop, I'm like, yeah, I get a MacBook or whatever you can get it. So you might have, you know, an iPhone and you might be using that. I didn't want anybody to be like, oh, what's going on here? But again, you probably already heard it. And um, we're going to do that. And I think we talked, I don't know if we talked about it on the show because they're going to be getting away, getting rid of like paper creation. It's going to go uh, monthly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like nothing's going to change for you except it's going to be cheaper on like months where there, we do five episodes because it's just going to be for a month and it's going to be for four. And like, I still don't know what we're going to do for like fifth episode. We might have like a Patreon only type thing. I don't know. I don't know. It's stuff I don't like dealing with, but yeah, nothing's going to change on your end. I think we got DDoSed. Oh yeah. Uh, legitimately DDoS or uh, the somebody tried to DDoS. take down Linux Gamecast. <laughs> There was an effort <laughs> that uh, was triggered shortly after we, well, we, I posted uh, a game we played in the after shows in last week. Kleka? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. I thought we people, were kind of positive. I, I'm t- it could have been a coincidence. Pe- pe- people don't like elevators. They want you to take the stairs. Yeah. Is someone uh, simping really hard for um, Lethal Company uh, and they see any kind of. <laughs> I no, think no, it, it might have been. <laughs> Some Speak people escalator. who were fans of the game. Again, this could have been a complete coincidence, but like within 30 minutes, somebody maybe 45 minutes of that, I started getting notifications, email notifications. And I'm like, what? You're under a higher than normal attack rate. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Mm. Go over to Cloudflare. And I'm like, ooh, somebody knocking on the doors. We survived. We never went down. Thank you, Cloudflare. Except in an elevator. Yeah. On that, on that one stream. Oh. <laughs> Gentlemen, EVGA, I got issues with you. Like, right before the show, I'm getting everything set up. I cut on Pedro's box, and uh, it has, like, those little cheap, like, $15 USB uh, HDMI adapters, which are not USB 3, and can only do 720p60, but that's what I send these boxes. I'm like, hey, these actually have uses, so I bought another one. And they're flaky as hell, man, but when they work, they work. Pedro's didn't want to work, and I'm like, fine, let me go storage room and i grabbed off the shelf i'm like here let me just get one of these uh hdmi uh converters that i had this is the evg xr1 that i did pedro's got the pro version of this yeah i take the shiny one out of the box like it's in the box because i took it i bought this thing i did a video on it i put it back in the damn box and put it up on the shelf that's where this thing lives it's been sitting there man i go to swap it out i take it out of the box I like squat down to reach behind and it does this. It <laughs> fell apart. Glued. The, the top, you would think the top was glued, but no, there's screws in it. There's four screws in it, gentlemen. All four of them just fucked off the plastic holding in the top at one time, like with no extra work. It delitted itself. I don't even know what the hell I'm going to do with that. I'm going to put it back in the box. Be careful. I'm going to tell you exactly what. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to forget about that, and I'm going to go get this next time, and I'm going to drop it. 
most Duct likely. Tape. Yeah. Duct tape. <laughs> Duck. Just epoxy the posts back on. <laughs> Super glue. Jordan, you're looking quite festive. I see that you two I have on my pumpkin shirt for the audio listeners. I was like, I was feeling in the mood because I was inspired by Pedro, but we'll get to Pedro in a minute. And Jordan decided to join in on the uh, festivities because this is kind what, of our what, what, Halloween what are you talking episode. About? I, I, this is just what I normally look like. Normally I put makeup over my antennae so that you can't really see them, but I decided to go, oh, natural this week. Well, you didn't have time for the full face paint, did you? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Oh. No, 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 no lizard Jordan this time. No lizard Jordan this week. That's a, listen, I, I, I gotta give actors credit, like fucking Virginia Hay and Farscape or like, uh, Gigi Ejli, Chiana, like people who fucking sit in makeup chairs and get the full makeup. I had to, that took like a very basic one for me, took like an hour and a half and my face was itching the entire goddamn time. There are people who have to do it. that. Yeah. There are people <laughs> who have to do that shit for like multiple hours every day. Holy moly. Now imagine though, now yeah. just imagine that you, you strike it though. And you're on like series nine. Right. Yeah. Of, 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 <laughs> oh no, no. Jor, Jormy lacks. What happened to your skin? It fell off. <laughs> I look like a normal human now. <sighs> Man, outside of playing with like Windows web servers, you got anything going on? No, I'm aging this week, so that that's fun. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. You actually are going to have like the uh, Halloween stream. I am. I got to figure out what kind of spooky crap I'm going to be doing on see, Thursday. Yeah, see if you can put up. Uh, get. Uh, I'll, I'll join in if I got. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll make time. I'll, 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 I'll see if I can rope El Pedro in there too, because you know I, I have temporal flexibility on that day. So you know maybe maybe we'll do a spooktacular. I don't know. Pedro's out. got an MMORPG to. Just invest every waking moment in right now. That see, and I, it's not even steampunk. Did you get like, uh, is is that a prize you won in your video game? <laughs> no, no. Apparently, this is my fault. This somehow. is a five- I love this. Yeah, I, I, I pull up the call and pagers like you, it's your fault. You did, and I'm you, like, what? You did, you did this. I did you, this. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Last year, I mentioned, uh, you know, off the cuff around this time that Tesco had some uh, quote unquote steampunk hats. Yeah. Which the only thing that made them steampunk is because they had like three gears and uh, the uh, goggles to go with. Them. <laughs> uh, and uh, Ven gave me guff because, oh, it was like five pounds and he didn't buy it. Come on. So this uh, literally today, I'm walking past Tesco's and I look at the Halloween aisle and I see the hats. So I just grabbed one, put it in the uh, shopping trolley and away we go. <laughs> It's funny. It's funny the kind of shit that sticks with you, doesn't it? Because yeah. like I have zero <laughs> recollection of this. Neither does Ven. He's like, and That's you come in, you're I like, didn't you remember you. either? Until I looked and I saw the hats. It's like, oh yeah. It's, no, but you clear, you clearly <laughs> remembered that then and there. That 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 stuck with you. It, it stung. I'm just imagining, yeah, like the smash cut of like the dream sequence of like, what the fuck? Why didn't you burn? This is the consequences of your actions, Venstone. Tremble. Yeah. Tremble, I say. Oh, like, uh, yeah, it was just five pounds and it didn't buy it. I would have bought it. Like, I, mean, fine, yeah, I mean, I said the same thing when you said it was five pounds. I was like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> How dare you not spend? Well, now you've spent the five pounds. How's it make I you have, feel? Yes, four pound fifty. Yeah, it, it, is- actually a little itchy. Because it's my head is way too big. <laughs> okay, see that was what I was about to bring up there. I I wouldn't even bother with hats because my head's so damn huge. I'm like, that's not yeah. it. I saw this, uh, the, Nori the, just these, these the hat and she put it on, head. even I've, I've, with I've her hair. significantly thicker and. Uh, you I know, thought you were going to say horns, hair but okay. <laughs> that, even, even with her tiny just, tiny skull. But uh, yeah, no, not on mine. I ha- it's just kind of sitting there, and the lip around my forehead's a little itchy. So there's that. <laughs> I wonder if, like, at the end of this podcast, you're gonna pull it up. And there's just gonna be a red ring of irritation because you're allergic to whatever's oh, in no, the No, no, no. It, it's gonna like absorb. It's gonna uh, bond. <laughs> oh yeah. It's just gonna fuse with my skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, take it out pull, pull, pull it off. Pull it. I mean, it's, it's, it's like going to, he's still going to bring it up. It's going to be progressively worse week to week to week, you know, because, you know, it's steampunk, dude. And like when Gotts <laughs> discovered the color brown, unlike her horse, who is truly colorblind. It's colorblind, but he is a horse of many colors. It's red and a horse green. Of many colors. And yeah, it's like, it's like Joseph and the amazing Technicolor dream horse. The steam. Donny Osmond references. Yes. Uh, Steam OS, uh, the new version is finally out. It's the stable, the big stable roundup of all the betas we've been covering up to this point. 
they updated a bunch of things, including KDE, but they only include uh, updated to the latest KDE 527 version. So no KDE, no Plasma 6, 6, yes. You know, as much as I hear you people <laughs> bitch about how crashy that is, good. <laughs> it's, it's very good. It's legitimately a very good idea. I actually very much agree. 527 is still a uh, perfectly usable desktop, so just keep I mean, using that. I mean, it's not like you're you're using that for the most part in your Steam Deck anyways. You're just going to be yeah, in the Steam Deck. You're, you're just on the GameScope version, so whatever. Uh, the, uh, and, uh, 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 wait, I did control F R O G confirmed right here. Yeah, added support uh, extra uh, ROG like keys and pro control. Yep, hundred percent. This thing's probably already on your ROG right now. Just reboot it. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, th those were the articles I saw. It's like, oh, new SteamOS version doubles down on the R O G support. It's like, are you n seriously not paying any fucking attention at this point? Nope. It's <laughs> the stable roundup here, of all the here. betas. That's what you reported on originally. What the fuck is wrong with you? Listen, You're missing man. out on the really exciting feature <laughs> here. You can use your Steam Deck as a remote control. keep track of what control. all you Linux nerds do with your fucking Game Boys, all right? So shut up. Clearly. I can turn <laughs> my TV on and off with my Steam Deck now. My life is complete. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can. And um, uh, the one of the big changes that they've made is uh, Wouldn't it be the dope kind as of fuck folders? if I had like an IR blaster in the fucking Steam Deck? Yeah, you can just boop. Yeah, yeah. For I mean, it I think, have honestly, a, like USB C. I, so you could I mean, that, that, get one. honestly, that should probably be like a, a like a universal feature for like a lot of these handheld PCs. It's just like yeah, a universal remote. Plug in the thing, get the code. I just from your always TV wanted and, that fucking yeah. uh, IR watch that sent out like all the codes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, to cut I, off to, TVs. I, I wanted I, one of those so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I went to a conference with a guy who had one, and oh. everyone was so fucking mad. It was funny. Oh, they were mad. I would have been jelly as fuck, man. I'm like, <laughs> well, well, no, they were they were mad because their TV kept getting shut off. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But yeah, they changed the way that some of the uh, atomic updates are uh, done in SteamOS proper because it used to be that anything that was outside of your home folder would just get replaced whenever they um, downloaded the new image and you reboot it and it loaded the new image. Now, uh, ETC is one of the folders that's going to stay, so if you have made any changes, config changes to package managers, SSH, whatever really, that should stick, which is although, a very, very nice thing. <laughs> although they also did add support for config fragments, such as in uh, SSH underscore, con underscore config dot D, which yes. is what you should be using if you are updating your SSH config file anyways, because those directory files in those directories get read. You can flip them to disable to shut them off. It's just a better way of handling things than editing the main config. Uh, the other cool D thing folders here, in general yeah, use them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, uh, for those of you who uh, are hoping to dual boot uh, other stuff on your Steam Deck, yeah. now supports booting stuff off of the SD card. So oh, you hell can yeah. do that. So that that's nice. It's a cool little feature. Can that's you just run Steam OS? I believe so. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> if, if if you wanted the internal storage for like purely games, and you just wanted to have the OS on the SD card, yeah. I mean, apparently I there was an issue with reading some. Um, Send disk cards, and this update also no, no, includes no, those. Uh, did they fixes. did they come from Amazon? Because some of those send disk <laughs> cards are not send disk cards, as we have discovered. Well, they're they're, ah, the, they're red the and they have an S on them. <laughs> Dude, yeah, right. Yeah, what do you mean? This forty terabyte uh, micro SD card isn't what? Like, <sighs> man, they need to fix that. They need to fix that. We already have the main Pedro. We're like I was showing Pedro. Like they they have NVMe. Mm -hmm. SD cards now. Like the future is already here, but ah, bro. how quick do you think an SD card would die? It would be a short, swift death. Death if you were just running your Steam Deck off of your SD card, would it? Honestly, probably not. If you're not like storing games on that thing, and you're I'm just thinking about like the, the shader. I'm thinking about the writes. Yeah, that's the thing. Even games, it's yeah. more on the reads rather than the writes because the writes it doesn't write all that much. Mm. Um. Because the it, writes get, depending on like, because this is the problem with like SD cards, like some of them have we're leveling ish like behavior, some of them just don't. And I run into a lot of comedic. I have this one, uh, this Micron that I have in the camera over there that is like, it, it's like a 64 gig, but it's ancient. It won't die. But holy fuck, you try to write something to it, it'll work, but go get something. Yeah, it'll take a minute. Yeah, I, I have a couple of those SD cards too. I have a couple of those SD card readers that'll like it'll it'll get it there, but it, it takes a minute. 
Yeah. Literally any of the old laptops. Uh, you stick an SD card in there, it's like, all right, I'm just going to get up and uh, walk away. <laughs> Crazy times. There's a little bit of a bundle out, the mystery. Not, not microids, microids. I don't know. Yeah, I guess we can do microids. <laughs> go, 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 go down to McDonald's. That looks like the microids. Linux Mint logo, but upside down. <laughs> yeah, that looks like, uh, yes, it kind of does, doesn't it? Not the bundle itself got me excited. Nope, this is, you know, books, films, whatever, games bundle. I'm like, I'm scrolling down. We got... Point and click. Yeah. What's under this? Well, they have new words under the uh, games here. Like, deck playable. Huh. And deck Proton verified. DB silver. <laughs> Proton DB platinum deck support. Yeah, I think there's a, yeah, there's a silver deck support in there. Deck playable, mm -hmm. deck verified. There's a, there's a couple of these, and it's not just in this bundle too. Uh, one of the other game bundles has a uh, has a deck annotation as well. Um, I think these are being. Uh, I think uh, because they are like per game. I think these are being like manually curated. So someone's like going and checking Proton DB and adding uh, adding a little note to them. I guess it's it's not the craziest idea in the world that like people who buy humble games would also have a Steam Deck. Yeah, we've been talking about them. Um, uh, first off, if you're gonna like use their ratings you need to like do the guy behind proton dba solid and link to his mothering site all right humble yeah should that, that that should be a link hashtag the, i know your mm -hmm. ea now but come the hell on that's like dark even for you it's good to have we talked about having a feature like this or an extension like this in actually the steam client because this is where you go if you're in the know you've been playing you know on the linux for a minute if you have a question you're like I wonder if this is going to run or more common. You got a problem with the game. You do name a game, Proton DB, you smash that enter button, takes you to the page. You go down to the comments, you find what your problem is, you plug it in and you're done. So this is good to have on the bundle. As an acknowledgement, traditionally humble, you know, a lot of people know humble from back in the day, the humble indie bundle, that cross platform humble bundle one, man, they got a lot of like for the first time, it's like, oh my God, we got games. So it's good to see, but Humble, put some links back to, because uh, like those links are valuable, because just saying a silver rating, silver don't mean nothing. The only thing that means anything, that it does have a rating, and that the users have solved whatever problems are there. That's where people because, need to be able to go. Yeah, and that's one of the things that the uh, ProtonDB does, is it? people say, yeah, just add this to the uh, extra flags Launch that option. you need for the launch codes. And the game will run just fine. You you need that, so that link. Would no, no, be no, very, that's over, helpful. Pedro. That's over. <laughs> Click button, burr, go burr. But, but they have Lutris a mix. Exists, just do it. They clearly have a mix, so I don't know why. Uh, because yeah, deck verified. That's an official. Humble, file you're one. doing good. All right, I am not going to be that jackholes like you're not doing good enough. Better than nothing, man. Better than nothing. It is absolutely better than nothing, and yeah, for the official ones absolutely no need to bother with the links because if people go on the steam store for to check on the game which you do link to fair enough but for the proton db yes please do include the url i do i do hope <laughs> they do transition eventually to it like updating via like a live poll as opposed to manually curating things because you know things change uh mm -hmm. games get updated proton gets updated people add remove eac um, publishers decide that we don't want to support the Steam Deck anymore. That kind of stuff, right? So, make make, make that make that information a little more. Wasn't that kind of fun to see from uh, Rockstar earlier this week? I posted that on uh, yeah. Twitter. The um, you know, Rockstar is like, you know, what was it last month? They're like, GTA Five no longer works online on Linux. Why we don't support Linux? They just pushed out an update. Just pushed out an update to their launcher to uh, improve Linux support. <laughs> Barricade, let's talk about another Solus Corporation with our Steam Games Update. I thought, I, thought, I thought you meant Sockhouse Studios. I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't know much about them. Uh, but aside from the fact that they released Barricade with a demo, which is nice, it's Windows only, so you need Proton for that. Um, oh, did they change this to fucking Windows only? Uh, the, the demo was, yeah. The demo the, is, uh, yes. The, the, uh, the, 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 the game itself oh, okay. is, uh, See, is dude, uh, man, they, people have been getting shit. I want to know. Here's something. I'm just going to fucking pause this right quick. I, this is becoming a real fucking problem, all right? If you're a fucking developer, don't pull that shit. Like, three times in three weeks, I've seen games disappear with Linux support. Like, if you know what's going on there, if you're doing it unintentionally, if you're like, oh, this thing does this when I push something out, maybe 
something's auto populated before you put push a game out and it let me know there, 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 there's that one there was that other game that this week as well that was in the show notes that looked at these that one i didn't like, even catch like until i yeah, saw pedro's comment i'm like the, right. the, the, yeah that was, mm-hmm. that was, i i saw that i'm like oh boy that's uh no no bueno but anyways barricade did you like the base building uh element of back for blood well it's just this except you're by your lonesome uh all by yourself uh i don't know i guess this is this is a game where you have to like build up barricades and survive as long as you can in this uh, zombie place kind of gives me a bit of a uh, dome keeper vibe or maybe Minecraft for people's who people who don't think the uh, zombies, zombies and creep, creepers are aggro enough. Um, yeah, I really feel that a game like this would definitely benefit from some multiplayer, especially because it's like, yeah, build some crazy death traps for zombies and defend yourself. That seems like something that would be fun with a bunch of people. I don't and know, man. I'm the- taking a look at it and like looking at like this is very much like, uh, baby's first 3d because like even even the guns are just like hovering in midair oh yeah, yeah it's at that part of development is this early access or like done oh this is no, done no, yeah no, yeah, that yeah. Done, seems to be done, 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 done. and if you're thinking about graphics man yeah it's got head crabs in it because it looks like half-life one also look that looks familiar didn't Ooh, it? no <laughs> half-life one looked so much better uh <laughs> they say it's uh built with a 90s aesthetic is that right. no no it isn't <laughs> Pedro, no. th- this is how somebody who wasn't born when Half Life One yes. was made. Imagine <laughs> this is, uh, what uh, someone one. who was born at the end of the '90s, early 2000s, think that the '90s looked like. Yeah, no, <laughs> just like this with wor- worse lighting. <laughs> I don't know. It's a bill. You can go play. What was that? A 2700. Oh, 2700 X. X. <laughs> ah, right. That's still. V- Okay, for the recommended. Yeah, no, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Good news, everybody. Uh, a game that I've been looking forward to playing is slowly getting a PC port a month after release. Uh, yeah. G- G- <laughs> James Gunn's foray into PC gaming. They're uh, September. Uh, in September, uh, Lollipop Chainsaw saw a bit of a revival, and uh, because it's no longer a console exclusive. Yay! We get to enjoy more of uh, Suda 5.1's insanity on PC. I'm down for that. Uh, and yeah, the Lollipop Chainsaw Repop, uh, the October update has a bunch of new stuff. Uh, the, uh, the, they specifically mentioned the Steam Deck. It's like, the, currently, the game should work on the Steam Deck with the graphics set to performance mode, but we're also working on a full implementation, which... Um, Includes apparently implementing a twelve eighty by eight hundred resolution, which getting that on a Japanese, primarily Japanese developed game, is that's a bit of a snap up. Even Elden Ring doesn't support twelve eighty by eight hundred. So you get seven twenty p with letter boxes. Fuck you. <laughs> I don't know, man. Listen, I was kind of shocked like they had a very bold strategy of releasing whatever they released last month with this which wasn't a complete pc port and they decided to slowly like trickle out with updates a pc port of this actual game so i i try i baby steps it's good to see steam deck getting an actual mention because like for even those of us who want to play it like on regular pc that's good news uh still working on adding things like a screen to change the graphical settings. Yeah. And just like, just to just get to- your head around like the state <laughs> this was released in. T- toggling options. This is very much a con. This was designed to run on one thing and one thing only. A PlayStation 3. All right. Like, uh, like- but till September, it was a console exclusive. <laughs> <sighs> Ultra wide support. The soundtracks are coming back. And that was another thing people took issue with. And on top of that, this thing's $44.99. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. All right. Up next, a bunch of Steam Deck stuff this week, but I love to hear it because it's 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 all trickle down. You know, this is what I really wanted from the Steam Deck. You know, because it's a thing you can point for, and it's uh, something a developer can target, and we all reap the benefits. It doesn't matter what you're running. That's that's why we're not getting the Steam Deck too anytime soon. Steam Deck Pro. Yeah. Steam Deck Extreme. Steam we sure Deck Extreme. Sure, getting the Steam Deck Three. So shut up. <laughs> yeah, Steam no, Deck Alex. To three yet, so <laughs> Steam Fortress Two. So there's a quote from a frequently asked questions thread. With this game, while the graphics will be great, we want to ensure more people can play. So we're going to aim for a wider 
range of PC hardware, including Steam Deck. Hmm. What FBC game? Firebreak, huh? Firebreak, huh? Have you heard of the Firebreak? Yeah, that's the control uh, three pl- uh, co-op shooter that's coming out. Right. And uh, I'm the one here who's played Control. Jordan's thought about it. For about- I, 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 <laughs> I, I own I have, it. <laughs> I, 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 play, I played to the point where I met Ati, and that was about it. The, oh, that was that's where it starts getting like, what the hell's yeah, going was, on? Yeah, it's like, oh, you can read my mind. Neat. All right. Well, yeah. I've been kind of excited about this, man. Uh, you know, a three-player co-op that's set in the Control universe. Like... If they're going to make sure it works on deck, at least, like I said, it's going to work, you know, over here on Debian, on Fedora and stuff like that. Co-op in the oldest house, dude. I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. And like this uh, trailer, it's got jokes. Like they got a sense of humor about it. Uh, SCP company, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm looking forward to. It's SCP multiplayer of the game. That's not a... And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this trailer history. and I'm like, I've been there. I've been there. Fuck that place. Also been there. <laughs> and I just want to know whether or not I can spend an entire afternoon collecting all the hidden CRT TVs. <laughs> on, on, only if you do the musical number. Dude, I fucked up, man. Because like YouTube was like, yeah, collect all these to get the ultra mega hidden weapon. I'm like, wait, what? And I click that and I'm like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> boot and control back up again play control if you have it remedies known for you know making cinematic movies with begrudgingly putting in gameplay Alan whack yeah control <laughs> it turns out it's not impossible to mess up gameplay when you can hover and dual wield guns turns out that's brilliant, and that, that is a silly, fun game. It got me into that universe, and it got me into the lore, and then you can go watch Jesse Cox just nerd bra- out. Bra- bra- Braingasm playing dude. through Alan Wake 1 yeah. and 2, yeah. Like, I, that dude got me excited about Alan Wake to the point where I installed Alan Wake 1, and I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think Max Payne was a little too free in his movement? Gave you a little too much freedom? Yeah, we're taking that away. <laughs> well, they give it back to you in control, honestly. So, you know. Yeah, yeah they give you like control. <laughs> you gotta take control. <laughs> Let's talk about something I touched on Wednesday and weekly, daily Wednesdays, and that's a new system. Got an email from System76, and they're like, hey, we got a new workstation. I'm like, man, whatever. It's ARM. Like, all right, hang on. Right click, move out of trash. All right, what was that? ARM. Yeah, check it out. Look at this. This is a little tower. It's got cars driving around it. System it's system 76. <laughs> Astra. It's, 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 it's the capture. Please select all the things on the road. That's Jelly, this is the first official desktop for streamlined autonomous vehicle development powered by Ampere. You heard that name right. Ampere. And you know it's going to be pricey. I'll tell you how much. This is the big chonky ARM desktop we've been waiting for. It might be a little too chonky for our wallets. However, mm-hmm. um... It's going to be coming in 128 cores of flavor. It's going to be coming with an RTX 6000 added graphics. It is currently ready for pre-order, shipping November 12th. No pricing information unless you go digging around a little bit. It turns out it's about $2,500 for the dev kits over at Ampere. So I was expecting this one to come in at like $4,000. Uh-uh. It's going to be $3,299, which is not a bad price at all. Uh, hopefully that number sticks. And... I went looking around, uh, and it's got one of these beautiful System76 cases, which is nice, because this gives you the 128 cores with PCI Express, RAM, all the niceties that you would normally expect, and I was like, who did they seed the review units to? I'm like, what outlets actually got a hold of these? And I'm like, oh, that's unfortunate. At least Phronix got one. (laughs) I'll say at least Phronix got one, but it'll... Over time, we'll get the Pronix test bench suite coming out on that. But the rest of them? It, it would have been one thing to send them a Linux machine, but sending them a Linux R machine, I'm like, that's just mean, man. They're not going to know what to do with that. They're, Step one, install Windows 11. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> install Windows for ARM? Ugh. I'm oh, just God. saying it's going to be far more in fascinating than informative to watch mm-hmm. uh, what some of these outlets are going to be doing. I don't think they're going to have a Maybe you sent it like some YouTubers, because, I mean, we do know that you can play some AAA games using FX at 1080p at 14 FPS. Mm-hmm. Yay. I don't know how many units that's going to move for you, 
I'm more curious of like, hey man, could something like this, you know, if not the System76 box, but like a dev kit from um, Ampere replace a Gen 1 Threadripper running the studio right now. I mean, what happens when I take the Thelio Astra and I put in some of my commercial capture cards in there from Blackmagic, from Magewell, from AJA Kona? Can this thing ingest quad 4K? Can it do that? How's it going to handle all my fiber optic cards? How's that work out? You know, can, is it fast enough? Is that 128 cores? Is the latency low enough for sub six millisecond audio on the fiber network in the studio? I got questions like that. Also, I'll play the Witch 300 at 14 FPS for a minute, <laughs> but. I think from a software. No, you're uh, going to throw Hollow Knight on there, obviously. You're just going to have to restart like, a playthrough. Can, can you're you get talking to I, I, Listen, I just finished playing Crisis on a video I'm working on right now on a single board computer. All right. So, <laughs> hey, if anybody from Ampere is like listening, hit up, hit up the owner of this site, Interfacing Linux. Get in touch with them because they do stuff like this. Uh, also, that person doing that, I'd also be me. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> Al alternate personality somewhere. Somehow. There you go. I, 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 I think was from a hardware perspective, you absolutely can do all of that. It's going to be the software support that's going to be the big issue because. And, and is and there a DaVinci Resolve for ARM on Linux? <laughs> yet. See, I'm already aware. See, this is like already knowing because I'm working on um, a couple of ARM projects. You know, I just finished the TrackBerry Pi, which was running a. Arm, you know, showing people that you can run x86 game servers on low power. And I'm going to be working on uh, the Banana Pi 4, which is kind of a more unhinged, hot but crazy version of ARM with like two dual 10 gig necks. But uh, DaVinci Resolve has an ARM version for Windows, not for Linux yet, but we get, like I said, I, I want to know about all the Black Magic stuff for video ingestion, OBS. I want to know about NVIDIA drivers and what we can get away with there. I have no illusions that I'm going to. Can I try to get DaVinci Resolve? Um, I would dare say I'm probably the best qualified person on this planet right now to take a stab at that. If you, you want to try it. You got to run through effects. That's, that's, that's Or Box 64. <laughs> that's true. Um, I mean, I, I, was, I was looking at some of those dev kits. I, I do appreciate the halt and catch fire ass like stacked motherboard. That's, all, that's always fun to see. Uh, where it, it, come, it comes in two parts. Um, yeah, the 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 ninety six core one is completely sold out. Yeah. The thirty the thirty two core one is on sale for sixteen hundred US. We were talking about that in the pre pre super shows, and go back and listen to that if you're a patron. Uh, but like that, that's the whole thing, dude. Like, happy, I'll take a thirty two core version, dude. Like, I don't need the top of the line. I just need something to play with. But I love this. Uh, the wood makes a good uh, pink uh, <laughs> turbo pink. Uh, Fuck, yeah. <laughs> That, that's that's the emma special you know that's there because of her dude i'd, I'd rock the pink one yeah what do we, we got that we got that and we got traditional the blue looks so bad the red looks okay the the, 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 the blue cream one colored one bad the cream colored <laughs> one looks like some kind of weird cookie i don't know i don't know like the wood grain i think is just too traditional like the pink just make you just know that box is up to something the wood grain makes me think of like 80 station wagon Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you know, for me, when it comes to like again. electronics, like wood grain, just uh, just screams Atari seventy six hundred. Oh yeah, or 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 Atari mm -hmm. yeah, like th th that era. It's classy, you know. But they have fair pricing, and, th and I've honestly, never seen a system seventy six anything because when you, no, no, I'm not talking about you know we're sitting here like well, I could build it. No, 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 no. I'm talking about like three hundred dollar keyboard. Though. You go buy a. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, limited run made by people getting, you know, paid actual wages. Yes, yes. that's what a keyboard's <laughs> going to cost. Like I said, fair prices. Now, if you compare, you know, their pre-built workstation, whatever, stack that up against the Lenovo or Dell. It's not that far off. Mm -hmm. Which and, is great and, considering they're, they're, they're relatively a micro company, too. And they're still yeah. rocking and rolling. They are actually out there trying to make Linux computing like a consumer product. And mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're taking some swings. Sometimes you miss, sometimes you fail, but that's part of, that's part of building up a, a product suite. That's part of yeah. like gaining that experience. Uh, and they're, and they're the ones who are doing it. So, you know, got to give them some credit where credit is due. Now let's talk about the fungus launcher. Fungus. 
Fungus. Yes. <laughs> Foggy Gus. Zero fungus. Yeah, I too saw this uh, earlier in the week on uh, Linux underscore gaming, and it's like, let's Boy. try it out. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, they describe it as a simple and lightweight app for running Windows games using UU, I mean, UMU launcher. Uh, and yeah. That it, it you, does you, exactly. You, you know, you're, you're you're just manifesting. There's going to be a, a furry based umu port called uwu. Oh yeah. it's just gonna fra- <laughs> it's gonna fragment the entire project. And it's gonna ruin everything. It, it, it should absolutely. It, it they literally do nothing except you know control R umu uwu. That's it. Uh, but yeah, it is exactly I, I what just, it I, says. I just need to. I'm looking at like this little um. Angry. Let, let's stop with the angry, edgy-looking penguins. Are already, you're already pit, that, just giving the people the wrong impression. All right, you're already probably a little <laughs> pissed off trying to figure out if you're already is here. It, right? Is that, is that angry? Oh, that's it. Yeah, I, I think like, that's going. For, it's got I, the sonic eyes a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I, I, I don't know. I, I see that, and that's like the empty stare my dog gives me when she wants food. Your dog hates you. Probably. <laughs> she. Just, I, I. I wake up with paws on my throat every right. morning. <laughs> But yeah, I did load it. I tried it. Uh, it's already better in than Lutris in one way. Ooh, shots uh, fired! Yeah. Oh, you're brave when he's, a, fight, when fight, he's stuck fight. at a canonical summit, aren't you? Look at you! Oh no, he's in oh, spinning he's distance. He's over here. He can, he can get <laughs> he's, to you now. Uh, close he's enough to. He's, he's yeah. a train right away. <laughs> but yeah, it is. Uh, it's better than Lutris in the way that it lets you pick and automatically download G Proton Nine Plus versions. When Lutris is still stuck at G Proton 826, I think. So that needs the fucking change, Strider. But uh, <laughs> uh, no, it works. It is very simple. Legitimately very, very simple. I just it's hope you know that start. you get to moderate uh, Discord 100% all you Monday, by the way. I don't want to fucking hear a peep. <laughs> I just let Strider do one of his vlogs as he does. <laughs> All right, where so he berates I, me so, uh, like he so, does. So, I, I, I got, I got to, I got to say, going through this, they have screenshots on the GitHub page. Very, Good very job. nice. I will, I, I will also say, having the same screenshots for both light and dark theme, appreciated. A little unnecessary, yeah, but completely. appreciated. Yeah, nobody like cuts on the uh, light theme by purpose. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I appreciate being thorough. I, I, from from that perspective, I understand. But also, you know, yes, I got to be honest, it, you know, one, here's some credit. I want there. There ain't no discord. There's no light like discord light. Everything looks kind of subdued compared to the. Yeah. Discord light is a retinas hearing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've never looked at discord light theme. I've, 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 I, I've, I've seen done screenshots of people. I've yes. done it once because I, I, I went into it. Well, I can't be that. S- it, 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 it's, it's <laughs> that bit from like the Matrix movie where Neo gets his eyes burned out. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did too many games get released in QT? QT, yes, QT. You're Q-thee. a real QT. Uh, well, uh, this is f- from howtomarketagame.com. And, you know, the author, author admits that the question is, you know, a little, a little bit uh, missing the mark. Is, is too many games a problem? Is it really necessarily a bad thing? Maybe if it is your goal to, like, pay your rent by making a game and selling it. Because there is definitely a shit ton of competition that you got to deal with. And, um... There's the question of how much more competition can you expect to deal with in the coming years? And it does seem like there are more and more games coming out. It's true, there are. There's uh, high-quality tools available for free. The barrier for entry has never been lower. And so this guy uh, has done some analysis uh, trying to figure out what things, what do uh, certain subsets of games have in common? Uh, and they're, the discriminating factor here is they're looking for medium, small indie, uh, medium-budget games that get a 1,000 Steam reviews that are ex- that are not things with a known IP that might um, just get people buying it because they know the name or Asian stuff because this guy doesn't know jack shit about Asian stuff and he doesn't want to do analysis based on it. So that amounts to about 237 games this year that have uh, hit that mark. There's some theories as to like what is causing this growth. Is it AI? Probably not based on the amount of AI games that are coming out or the games that are self-reporting using AI tools. Is it idle games? No, trends happen. And there's a lot of these uh, things that come up. Um, we, we saw it with like Lethal Company. We saw it with like Among Us, Roblox, all that stuff. When a new hot game genre comes out, people will try to jump on it. And in fact, that can actually be a recipe for success. If you just take basically, if you copy paste the game mechanics and just change the setting, that is often enough time to enough, uh, enough of a thing to generate some reception to your game. Look at me. Uh, I'm the fall guys now. Exactly. 
stumble mm-hmm. stumble buddies. Um, so uh, what they do find what they do uncover here is that conventional wisdom holds true for the most part. The first month of your sales is going to determine your overall sales or your overall fate. But there is there is the possibility for slow growth. And if you want to maximize your chances for that, the recommendations are make sure your game is actually fun. Put it on sale a bunch so people actually buy it and solicit feedback and keep it updated. The games that tend to have slow growth that do actually hit a a thousand reviews um, are relatively frequently updated with like new content or fixing bugs. So uh, once the thing is released, make sure that it's in a good state and that uh, people continue to enjoy playing it. Yeah, I have just one of issues with one of the uh, the statements that they made, uh, which is they they're using a thousand reviews and they were saying that you can't buy bots to get a thousand reviews. You can't do this to get a thousand reviews. You can't do that. Okay. Are we talking a thousand reviews without valve's new steam, uh, steam review filter, or are we talking a thousand reviews with the filter on and filtering all of, you know, the stupid uh, ones the, out that the, the uh, old filter, because this has data from before that. So, yeah, because yeah, if it's without the filter, I do think it's fairly easy to get bots or something for two, over two, a thousand. Two hundred and thirty-seven games, Pedro. That's that's <laughs> what that's what the number was. So y- mm. yeah, it, it came down to two hundred with the uh, exclusions, which yeah. some of those I do agree because yes, if you are releasing something like a Metal Slug game, just having Metal Slug in the name that immediately draws a lot of attention. So mm-hmm. that fair uh or the, but, or the like yeah. the vampire survivors castlevania thing right like that has yes a, or the dead cells castlevania but, thing or like one of the other castlevania tie-ins <laughs> <laughs> like that bit i that i'm down with it's just the, the comment that you can't buy bots to uh get a thousand reviews like yeah you can it's yeah, it, yeah. And, and, and the guy admits it's a bad proxy but it's something that you can do you have to either have a really good game or a really bad game it has to generate enough of a reaction to warrant mm-hmm. getting to that thousand review mark for the most part yeah right that that that, that fair enough but uh the just from the game's growth uh i mean the dude's bit, looking at like his avalanche of data he's like you're gonna hang up on this one <laughs> it was more really? of the choice of words uh oh, that he's it's just like, wording it's not even the point got it okay uh, right on I, I, he does make the thousand reviews the point of this entire thing so yeah it is kind of the point <laughs> So, but, and, and again, you know. really admits it's a poor proxy, but again, without really any sort of release numbers from Valve, this is kind of the best you can do. We, yeah. we, we, have, and, we, we have to use these sort of soft numbers and, and goose it and realize that this is, these are not like hard and fast rules. It's not like hard and fast data analytics. And according it's, to his own data, you can see like the, the graph with the um, amount of games released over the year. There's been a significant uh increase over the past uh, he's got from to 2019 up to 2024 2024 is like 3000 games away with 3 months still to go uh then uh, 2023 was at the end of the year so it's coming very very close to once again just having another logarithmic increase from his own games uh, in maps. games out it depends on how you want to look at it because i've seen like two camps in game dev uh one is number crunchers like hardcore fucking number crunchers you know they got you know the fucking game design starts with the spreadsheets doing the research what's popular what's trending how are we going to take advantage of that something jordan headed at earlier you get the clones right he brought up that example you got the banana game then you got Egg. <laughs> yeah the, 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 there's there's cucumber banana it's it's both there's like half cucumber half banana it's crazy then you got things that just kind of come out of nowhere and that example you know lethal company it's like hey let's take a little spin you know one dude sitting around playing around does that but there's that this is the one reality where that worked out because there's 999 other versions of the, where five people ever played lethal company and it was the exact same game because there's that element of fucking luck. No matter how much research you do, how much, how much, we've all done it. Everybody in this audience, let me know. Leave me a comment. You probably can't remember the name of the game, though. You've seen the game. You've downloaded the demo. You might even have it in your library. Fantastic fucking game. Great soundtrack. Great art. Plays well. Ten people have played it. 
Yeah, it never found its market. It's got two reviews on Steam. Like, something went wrong. You know, you, everybody's hit that one game where you go, what happened here? And, and like, uh, I, we, we brought up Thor from uh, Paris Software last week, but he, he, was, he was talking about how uh, in, in one stream I was watching where you actually have to go out and, like, find your audience. A mm-hmm. lot of the time with, like, Steam, the discoverability isn't there. You have to go and actively court people. You need to go on forums. Yeah. You need to go on You got to talk to people. You get into the market. You can't rely. I think he brings up, you know, you just can't sit on, like, a thousand wish lists from, like, guaranteed. Like, no. No, you, and, you, yeah, you, you, you got to do the legwork. Yeah, you, got, you could have thousands of wish lists, but if you botch the release of your game, th- those wish lists are not going to yeah, magically well, I, convert into sales. You yeah, need and, and, to make sure that the release is done properly. And, and, and con- again, conversion is the big thing, is how do you get people from interest into actually buying things? And again, yeah. making, making sure that it's fun, making sure that it's updated, and making sure that it's accessible. And, you know, take it from three people who've never released a game. We know what we're talking about here. So we, we com- have seen a lot of game releases. Yes. <laughs> we're confidently parroting the, st- the statistics from this exactly. article. Exactly. <laughs> um, we got to put our own uh, spin on it. But no matter what you do, keep in mind, it's like streaming. Like, there's that element of luck. So I don't want you to get down. I don't want you to feel bad if you did everything right. You did everything by the numbers and you still fucked up. You gotta be ready like, for round two. There's that's and you gotta be able to catch your losses. You gotta be able to kill your babies. It's things, like the card says. It's possible to do everything right and still lose. Yes. What Pedro? <laughs> I was going to give a very personal example, but then I decided against it. No. <laughs> that, 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 that time that you were trying to do the culvert starburst with Les- Wesley Crusher and Tom Paris. No. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, we are about to head up out of here. But if you want to leave us some feedback, a little bit of hate mail, comment on the show, you know where to do it, right below the video. I got faith in you'd be able to figure it out. We got a contact page over on Linux Gamecast with an email address if you'd like to use it. Like some mysterious bot did earlier this week that I had to go down a little bit of a rabbit hole. I'm like, why are you wasting people's time, bot? Go away. Got one message. Because we were talking about... uh, you know what? I read this. I don't know what the hell we were talking about to cause this. Let's be I have I have no idea either. But we're no. let's go on a trip. Synthetic Owl <laughs> is gonna take us somewhere, <laughs> take us on some acid trips. He says, "Hey Pedro, do you have any concerns that one of Ven Studio Thingamajiggies bought off eBay's from some mad scientist, which he hand soldered a firewire interface to, could catastrophically fail in during an LGC stream, hurtling you across space and time to Canada, causing you and Jordan to swap bodies, a la Freaky Friday?" And though Ven is 80% sure he can reverse a project process using Debian Unstable, Jordan refuses to switch back. That's that's highly unlikely. As he <laughs> yeah. continu- now possesses your collection of obsolete laptops, which he's always secretly coveted, condemning you to a life as a hairy hulking form in a constant war against dead raccoons invading the house. Any worries at all? I mean, so you're saying in this hypothetical scenario, fanfic as Ven calls it, um, that I would become a stronger person a healthier person that gets paid more money and lives in uh basically not the uk yeah no i don't i i i i'm i don't see the downside here oh i'd have uh two symmetrical hands as well yeah no <laughs> jordan is the one that should be worried in that particular scenario yeah, how many I, um <laughs> weeks i'm not even gonna say months would it take for you to get everything turned around for the pedro body um three possibly four <laughs> i could probably i could probably do something decent within like six to eight months six? yeah i was gonna say six <laughs> yeah like like the the, the the stuff doesn't happen overnight I have six to, like, to get a good get, base no, okay now yeah, here's the get, challenge get used to the to the will to yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, you gotta fill it up but you, you gotta get him to where he is insisting to switch back okay all right so all right. is that like 14 12 14 months yeah, I, I think two two years seems reasonable for that. Two years, all right. <laughs> Does he get to keep the hat though? We'll see. Oh, sure. I'll, 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 I'll see. I'll see how I feel after two years. Also, we're we're, we're going to use Debian stable just to fuck with it. No, no, happens. no, no. We 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 got we got to use Catchy OS, obviously. Yes. 
Oh. That's, that's like the hot new one, right? <laughs> to, 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 to catch the souls as it's being extracted no, no, from the no, body no. so that you can put it in the other body. See, the, the, this is when people start getting real. When I, I drag these two motherfuckers into the lab and like put them in my fucking brundle fly boxes. And I'm like, Cashy OS no. or Debian Stable? Which one? Now, who do you think, <laughs> who do you think would fuse better with Jeff Goldblum, myself or Pedro? See, I'm going for entertainment value here. <laughs> Me <Mia> does. Is... <laughs> how, how is this fusion going to work? Um, Are we talking fusion, ha fusion, or like Brundlefly? Brundlefly with the fusion dance at the same time. So we're doing the dance in the pods. Yeah. As, 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 as you yeah. hit a switch. <laughs> And you each have like a one half of the cock ring. I got it. Yeah, um, yeah. No, we, we, it's, it's the Potara cock ring, right? right? Like, so we get like the triple fusion. For entertainment Welcome value, the- just you. <laughs> By the way, spoilers for Dragon Ball Daima. See episode three. I just want to see Brendel Flight uh, shave. Yeah. Uh, just just the, the, the chest hair, the gold bloom esque chest just hair. Just go chest for it. Mm-hmm. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we do, like the cut of our job, become a patron. Get a bunch of bonus shit, pre-show, post-show, all the stuff that doesn't make the show. <laughs> Who knows? We might have just finished a conversation about shaving flies. Shave the flies. <laughs> Who knows, man? You know, we're doing pretty good this week. We'll probably Shave. be uh, pretty tight. We're only like an hour and ten in, so everything will be nice and tight. Uh, yeah, we get the 11 and cut version. You get access to our show notes, access to our Discord, and a gang of other bullshit. Uh, we like to throw your way as a thank you. For keeping us loud, live, independent, commercial free for how many years? 12. Uh, well, 13. We just 13. crossed the 12, 12. <laughs> year. We're, we're, right. we're, it's, it's, it's not quite Linux Game Cast's bar mitzvah yet. Okay. Seems legit. We do game streams. We got the RPG thing figured out finally. We took a four minute RPG map, which is the world record, and we managed to set a very solid 56 minutes on it. Okay. Which is good, considering it was three people, and that is open to everybody. That is open to everybody. It's about 8.45 p.m. on Fridays, if you want to come join in. Everything you need to know is over on Interfacing Linux and the forums and the uh, Trackmania RPG thread. Come in. But if you are a Twitch sub or patron, you can come play with us this Tuesday when we're doing some Time Attack. And I'm setting up like a Trackmania channel on YouTube, which is its whole other can of chainsaws, which might be fun. Um, stay if you, tuned. If you can finally receive the email. <laughs> It will be entertaining. Until next week, you beautiful Linux-loving miscreants. uh, But it's time for us to cue the music. You can always find us pulling out of the Nightmare Station. I I, I just blinked and Pedro looked like a Quaker. I thought, like a pilgrim. I expected him (laughs) to start vomiting out. Give me oatmeal, Pedro. <laughs> you, I demand. You said Quakers, like, oh yeah, I'm a cookie now. Huh? No, no, you're a '90s 3D <laughs> arcade game on the PC. A Quaker. Anyway, you can get in touch with me over on X. I'm at Vin Stone over there. Mastodon, mast.linuxgamecast.com. I'm at Vin, and of course, probably still the only Vin on the blue skies. I have to return to my home planet Zeist until next week. But until then, you can follow me on Twitter at Burning Fool, at Frojo at mass.linuxgamecast.com, or at Frojo at bsky.app. I have plenty of screws loose, but I, I am actually wondering when exactly these gears are going to fall, fall off. off. Yeah, <laughs> you, so, so, no, 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 you, you got screws loose, but when are you about to nut? Too hot for Twitch. Uh, you can follow me at unaccounted for at mass.linuxgamecast.com uh, on Mastodon because, uh, yeah, that's 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 where I'm at. <laughs> Time for us to bolts. I don't know. That was pretty riveting. <laughs> Fuck you all. Ah, all we right. screwed. Ah, we screwed it up. <laughs> <laughs> let's get rid. Let's get some encores back, man. No, wait, what, what, one thirty-one. <laughs> we need. We, we, yeah, we need. We need prime number of cores. Hundred. Hundred and. Hey, uh, I have wait, a wait, three wait. core CPU. Yeah, we gotta pick our advisors out there, and our executive producers one two three four five. Ian Ishep, Kurdaki, Thotargos, Drummer, Barbara, M. Scott, Atomic, Mike, and our little Nikki fans. They are Eggy, Basil, Empty, Casey Clism, and that's it. We got Sea Monsters, Sea Monsters, Essie, Joe, John, Dirty Dean, Angel, Dementor System, TRL, Red Rex, Mike, and Nehemiah, Veritanuda, Trudgy, and Mike, and the Death Notes, Redisk, Not Shallow, okay, 
Uh, Mark, Tara, Oil of Hope, Benjamin, Nova, Chad, Romeo, Nubbin, Turnover, Martin, Renee. Ah, I could not get all of them. <laughs> he tried. There was an attempt made. And of course, we got a flock of seagulls, well, aka the cheerlings, along with our Libra players. I do want to thank Norse Ranger and System T. System T. For the resubs over on Twitch as well. As always, you know, uh, 1,000 reviews. And you don't have to. Does Linux Gamecast cast have 1,000 reviews? Do we do Linux Gamecast? Do we have reviews? Cap- Linux have Game reviews? Catheter. I don't know, on Google, po- on Google Podcasts or some shit? They, I don't they, know. They killed that. Oh, did they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Google Podcast is dead. Uh, it's gone, Do we right? have reviews on iTunes? Spotify? Probably. Some Something like know. that? I don't know. Somewhere we're, somewhere we're, where the podcast is. To do this, is, we're not very good at <laughs> No. <laughs> never have been. Dying to fire, everybody. See Quick next time. Week. Back when podcasts mean you listen to them on your iPod. Five dudes.